What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So if we have a look at what is going on guys, we are seeing more than just a weekend dip. We are seeing a weekend massacre. It is red across the board. No one is safe. This is probably one of the worst consecutive dips we've had in this bear market. You're seeing Bitcoin dominance at 50.8% Bitcoin at 61.63. Ethereum is taking an absolute beating. If we have a look, this is the first time we've had Bitcoin dominance this high, uh, you know, in quite a while. And obviously, like I said, guys, Ethereum is taking an absolute beating lately. Now, why? What's going on? Well, it may have a lot to do with this. So it says that data by sentiment says that ICOs have sold nearly 100,000 Ether in the past 30 days alone. Around $40 million worth of ETH has been liquidated in the past month with nearly 100 thousand ETH sold by project projects that raised funds through ICOs. This is crazy, guys. You have Autonomy selling 12,000, App Coins 8,400, Open Ledger 5,400, Ethereal 5,400, uh, Status last year it says 30,000 between August and October, but they've continued to sell for much of this year 16,000 in total, 4,800 of it in the past. 30 days just alone. So, I mean, guys, obviously one caveat here is that the ETH spent doesn't necessarily mean they were sold. The projects may have just simply moved the Ether from one wallet to another, but that the assumption is that most likely if they moved it, it was spent. So this is really difficult. We don't know 100%, but guys, I definitely have to say that we brought this topic up a while ago. Actually, it was in one of the one of my first videos actually I ever did with the crypto lark, one of the big topics of conversation that we were having is all of these ICOs, right? So you give these ICOs your ether, you give them Ethereum, right? What do they do with it? I mean, they give you tokens, you give them Ethereum, they take that Ethereum, they don't care, they inst instantly liquidate it, right? Crashing the price, what do they care, right? It was a fundraiser. They don't care if they crash down the order book, right? And you can even see over here, just to kind of prove on the statement as well, this came out a few days ago, but you have Rand Nooner. He says, spent the morning with an ICO, not to be named. They raised 30 million USD with a solid roadmap. They raised when Ethereum was $1,200. They panicked and sold their remaining ETH last night. They have $4 million left. So there you guys go. I mean, when you have... ICOs panic selling, that's not good guys, that's not good at all. So anyway, moving on to some other things in the market as well, you have Charles Hoskinson, he even chimed in on the on the whole, uh, he, didn't, he didn't talk about ICOs, but he had a surprise AMA on Twitter, and he was talking about Bitcoin as well, and, and Bitcoin dumping, so he was like, then we had $30, then we went back down to a dollar, then we got the $4, then we went to 256 bucks, then we went to 80, then we went to 1200, then all the way back down to 250, then all the way up to 20,000, and now we're back down again. So he stated that the value of Bitcoin basically went from $200 to 6,000 over the years, which is one of the best investments one could ever make. Despite this, Hoskinson said that people in the cryptocurrency space tend to have insanely short-term horizons. In other words, if the price in short-term falls from $20 to $6, the investors panic and think that the dream is dead, right? And I actually agree with this as well, and this is why I'm very long on crypto, not on all these projects. I think a lot of people are just fed up with these, you know, different types of tokens, different types of ICOs coming out. It's like, what are you guys providing? And even a lot of the products that have come out, I mean, for example, even look at Augur. When Augur came out, it was booming. It had a whole bunch of users. And I think just recently they said that uh, 24 hour volume of users was less than 50. Less than 50? 50. Think about that, guys. If an app got listed on the App Store and had 50 users, that app would be laughable, right? But you're talking about projects that are raising multiple 
millions of dollars in ICO rounds, taking years to produce what they say they're going to do. And then it doesn't even get adopted when it comes out and nobody's really using it. So there are a lot of issues in the space when it comes to that. And we're still trying to find that common ground between, you know, revolutionary decentralized tech, but something that like people actually can use, want to use and, you know, have incentive to use. So kind of piggybacking off of Cardano real quick. I don't want to go too into this, but it says the Cardano team has revised its delegation design document several times in order to facilitate a reward system. By the end of the week, the last revision is expected to reach completion and sent for further review. So you can kind of check this out right here. It goes into all this different stuff. Um, I'll drop a link. I'll just drop it below. You guys can read about that. So what I found was interesting was they said in a recent thread on Reddit, you have Vitalik Buterin and uh, Charles Hoskinson going at it once again. You know, these guys love to constantly go back and forth, back and forth. So it says that most of the technical debate revolved around the achieved safety of the two networks. Charles claimed that Ouroboros has achieved 50% Byzantine tolerance under partial synchrony in papers that according to Charles has been accepted at international cryptography conferences. So then Vitalik responded saying that he doesn't put much weight on the credibility of conferences over analyzing the subject matter and that there are 30 year old established results that it is impossible to achieve a 50% fault tolerance under partial synchrony, but that he would look forward to clarification on the matter. So the the Casper protocol, on the other hand, has reportedly only been able to achieve a 33% fault tolerance that is safe under asynchrony. Okay, so that was basically the gist of it. If you guys really want to read the entire thing, this is it right here. How does Casper compare to Ouroboros IOHK blog? This is the whole thing. If you guys want to read it, I'll drop that in the description for you guys as well. Also, moving on now, this is like kind of the bigger news of the day. I see a lot of people speaking about this. So you have Coinbase executive David Marcus leaving for Facebook. And then the question is, is Facebook embracing crypto? Well, it says David Marcus, an important executive at Coinbase, has left his post there to go work full time at the blockchain team at Facebook. So Marcus, who was initially a vice president on Facebook, went to work with Coinbase, taking advantage of his prior expertise as director or directive of PayPal. So this guy's been all over the place in a way. He kind of seems like he hops around anyway. But he says, and his mission there was to help them apply their knowledge in cryptocurrencies to a secure, uh, to secure a quick payment system. But later, he was named head of blockchain research at Facebook. And now it seems that things have gotten serious and he wants to dedicate full time to his new endeavor. So it says, using the already present platform of Facebook's communication app Messenger to massify cryptocurrencies and take them to the next level by letting users transact and pay for goods and services from within the social network could be a game changer. But let's be honest, guys, right now it's a bunch of speculation. All of a sudden now people are saying, well, is Facebook going to have micro payments? What, you know, what is Mark Zuckerberg up to? He's a clever fella. Like, is he going to get involved? So, you know, I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, you have seen Facebook and Instagram, obviously, because Facebook owns Instagram, they lifted the ban on crypto ads and the main one that you've seen is Coinbase. So that's something interesting to note as well. However, they did clarify that, um, you know, Marcus's decision to step down was made to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest, but they declined to elaborate. So his departure comes less than a month after Facebook exempted Coinbase from its blanket ban on cryptocurrencies. But they are on good terms. So, you know, Brian Armstrong says he remains a close friend of the company and we thank him for his help along the start of our journey to create an open financial system for the world. So I don't really know. I mean, I would assume that at some point these companies like Facebook would want to look into crypto payments what's their deal? What are they doing? We don't really know. And honestly, I don't really expect them to say what they're doing. These bigger guys tend to work a lot in privacy. You know how they are. So, but we'll see what happens. I mean, it's all speculation, guys. It's all speculation. Also, speaking of speculation, rumors, and jumping the gun, I just wanted to read this also to clarify that a Facebook spokesman reportedly told Cheddar that the company is not engaged in discussions with Stellar and we are not considering building on their technology. So the reason that I'm bringing this up is because the statement was made in response to Business Insider's reports that the two companies had discussed a potential fork from the main Stellar network as part of its blockchain efforts. Sources from Stellar reportedly told Business Insider that it would make 
makes sense for Facebook to record payment transactions onto a distributed ledger like Stellar. However, they are not using Stellar. So that's just a rumor before the price goes through the roof and you know everything else, guys. So the one thing also I wanted to talk about real quick, I know we were just speaking about ICOs, but I still find this kind of interesting. So you have Lisk, they have their first side chain. So you know, take the analogy of Lisk core chain as districts, its side chains would be like the streets in the districts, and then the dApps would be the shops in those streets. So you have I think it's pronounced Madonna. It stands for Market for Data Analysis. It's essentially a decentralized marketplace for data analysis that allows network members to participate in data markets while preserving their privacy. The platform thus connects data producers, data analysts, and data consumers. Plus, it protects the data from third parties and cyber criminals through the use of blockchain technology. So I just kind of figured we would just talk about that because that's something that we've been waiting for for quite some time. So that is out of the LISC camp. Also moving on, you know, I'm just trying to do some really quick coin news. Not too much today, just going to kind of barrel right through it. So we have Qtum. So is now so Qtum is now available on Amazon Web Services. So it says with the launch developers and users of the Ethereum Web Services now have an opportunity to develop and launch smart contracts using the Amazon machine image, which is made up of Qtum Core, Solidity and Qmix Web IDE. So the CIO of Qtum Foundation, Miguel Palencia said Qtum's launch is the AWS marketplace in the AWS marketplace provides an easy to use powerful cloud-based solution for end users and the enterprise. Anyone who wants to develop or build dApps on the Qtum platform or use it as a skating node will benefit from this. So one of the merits of using the Qtum AMI on the AWS is due to the relative ease in starting on the blockchain technology without the hassle of handling uh, dependencies, right? So the platform also makes it possible for users to run a Qtum node or use the pre-installed node to launch a server into its main net. So that's just more news coming out of there as well. Also guys, we have CZ. So he finally responded. A lot of people have been saying Binance has just been listing a bunch of shit coins and all you gotta do is just basically pay for it and you can get your coin listed. So he says, we do not list shit coins even if they pay 400 or 4,000 BTC. ETH, NEO, XRP, EOS, Monero, Litecoin, more listed with no fee. Question is not how much does Binance charge to list, but is my coin good enough? It's not the fee, it's your project. Focus on your own project. Your majesty, please list my coin. Shut the f up and pay me my 400 BTC listing fees. This is not Satoshi's vision. Who cares? Sure, okay. <laughs> Taking that with a grain of salt, guys. So let's talk about some adoption. We have the Volkswagen group. They had this tweet that came out. It said, bringing blockchain systems to the road. We are working full steam ahead on making super safe crypto systems available to our customers for filing the tank, unlocking, oh, filling the tank, unlocking your car and all kinds of other possibilities. So there you go, guys. Volkswagen. And here's the official uh, write-up. If you guys want, I'll drop that below as well. And then you also have Australia to launch its first ever solar-powered Bitcoin mining farm. So this is going to be 200 kilometers south of Perth, coal mining of Kali. It is to be powered by a solar farm to be constructed by a tech company called Hadouken? and set to be developed by the data center operator DC2 and subsidiary Dcoin. So it says by providing customized low cost hosting options, specifically engineered for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin mining at globally competitive rates, DC2 and Dcoins have been able to attract the interest of both the local and international crypto mining community. So guys, that's basically it for today. Um, obviously, you know, it's a little tough with the markets right now. They look like they're kind of steadying out a little bit right now, but who knows what could happen. Anything could happen, guys. It's crypto. The important thing is to remember that it's volatile. We are early. And honestly, yeah, it's tough. What are you going to do? You know, we knew it was speculative when we got into it, but at the same time, you know, I'm still a huge believer in Bitcoin. And personally, I've been a little skeptical on speaking about what I'm doing because, you know, then people do what I do, which is what I don't want you to do. I want you to do your own research, make your own decisions. But honestly, right now, it really doesn't matter what research you do. The markets are down. So you could have, you could have done brilliant research, fundamental analysis, put your money on the best projects ever, 
and everything's down right now. So there's literally nothing that anyone can do. We're all in this boat together. I'm here, you're here. It's gonna get better, guys. And I'm not trying to like, you know, do that sunshine and rainbow speech, but I'm telling you, especially, and if you're concerned about the alts, then don't buy alts. You know what I'm saying? Like, but me personally, I've actually been dollar cost averaging slowly back into Bitcoin, increasing my Bitcoin comparative for my own portfolio or my percentage, because personally I've realized that when I've looked at all these different choices that I've made, I've made some really huge gains on projects for sure. But ultimately when you really look at it, the best way to accumulate wealth is really just to hodl Bitcoin and deal with the ups and downs that Bitcoin has. So not to say I'm becoming a maximalist by any standards, but it's just something to consider, not financial advice, do what you want. However, you know, you should always probably keep some Bitcoin in the portfolio, just to hedge, market leader. It's the one everybody knows. It's the household name. So that being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to the channel on this Saturday. It's actually a gloomy day in New York. It's been raining all morning. And I'm like, how how perfect of a day, right? I wake up, the markets are down. It's a gloomy, rainy day. It's like, ugh, wake me up tomorrow, right, guys? But that being said, that's not the attitude to have. Get out there, enjoy yourself, put the phone down, stop looking at crypto, spend some time with the family. And that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting, you guys are amazing. You're the reason I do this every single day. You know I love you guys. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.